Yeah. We'll talk about that maybe later. Okay, so then my next question was, how many resorts are currently offered under the ICON Pass? Uh, and it's like, you know, it's always interesting to hear what people think. Because I don't know how you actually go to all the other resorts on your ICON Pass. But anybody, any guesses out there? 50. 13. 25. Who said 50? Somebody said 50? Uh, they saw my other presentation. You're wrong. It actually changed. We actually have 52 now. We just announced two more this past week, if you're keeping track. Uh, one more in Japan and one more in. I can't remember where it was. Oh, uh, Panorama Mountain in Canada. So, so, all the, so here's all the resorts that are part of Icon Pass 52. Uh, and yeah, the ones that are in red are added this season are partner resorts, um, not own resorts, but partner resorts that you can access for, you know, whatever this limit number of five days or whatever on the icon pass. But you know, it's I mean, it's just I think it's just worth showing this because you know, as you guys are talking to your clients and stuff and what have you, and in terms of the pass product, you, when you think about what you're paying for the icon pass, same basically the same price we were paying for the season pass for Mammoth in June before, right? Big Bear down the Big Bear as well. Uh, you get all these resorts now, which is is just a massive value to the consumer. And uh, and there's some amazing resorts there. I mean, look, Sun Valley got added in, Chamonix in, in France. I don't know how many of you guys ever get an opportunity to go to Europe to ski, but you should do it bef before you can't ski because it's a whole other world of skiing over there if you ever get a chance. Uh, Kids Fuel, I've been to Kids Fuel, and uh, it, you know that that's just this. Massive resort, and uh, the Dolomiti in Italy is another incredibly gigantic resort. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like going to Mecca. So if you guys, if you're serious about skiing in your life, you should definitely make do yourself a favor. And now you have the ability with the Icon Pass, you don't have to pay for tickets. You just got to go over there, and it's actually relatively cheap, amazingly. Uh, you know, as far as at the resorts, at least it was when I went about seven years ago. <laughs> I was sort of shocked by the prices. I was like, wow, this is cheap. <laughs> so, in any event, I uh, encourage you guys to go and experience your Icon Pass and go to the other resorts. And obviously, you know, Utah's within driving distance, right? And we've got a pretty hefty number of, of uh, resorts just, you know, that are there that are, you know, really incredible resorts, as you know. So, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Do you know what's the most amount one person has seed on I, their pass? I don't, I don't, but I'm sure somebody's done all of them, right? I mean, Although that's a lot of resorts to do in a year, in a season. I can't imagine you could do it all in a season, but, uh, yeah. I know a lot of people who get to retirement and say, okay, now I'm doing the road trip, and I'm going to hit all the, you know, do the big West Coast swing through the Rockies and hit them all, right? And, and uh, we all aspire to do that at some point here. All right, so I'm going to talk about Mammoth's capital plan. Uh, this is current year. Uh, so $32 million we're spending on capital this year. Um, and then the breakdown really as we... Uh, do our capital is between our annual reoccurring maintenance, not recurring, but annual maintenance is uh, about almost seven million dollars, um, and that's just just that stuff that we spend every year. We're spending putting that much or more into into the business every year just to keep the place up to par, right? That's buying snow cats and vehicles and uh, repairs to buildings and snow making and everything else, right? I mean, as you know, working that. Uh, you know, we're a high resort and we take a beating from the weather and uh, so it, it costs a lot just to keep the doors open and uh, yeah. Uh, any guesses on what a snow cat costs? 500000 bucks for a snow cat. Wind pulley or what's that? Round number. What's that? Wind pulley or? That's the winch. It's a little more expensive. Yeah, some of the liners are a little less but, but yeah, round number is half a million bucks just for a snow cat. So those things, they don't last forever. You get like 10,000 hours out of it so um, you know, we constantly are turning over our snowcat fleet and keeping it up to date. Um, so again, just want to point out, you know, what it takes to run this business. Uh, major maintenance, 6.7 million. Um, and those are kind of one-off sort of big spends that we have. I'll get into a few more details on what that is. And then growth capital is things that, you know, try to grow the business. Uh, 18 million, I'll, I'll explain some of those details to you here. Uh, so here, some major maintenance. Um, Sort of the big spends this month, this year in, in that category. But another example of something that you, goes unnoticed, you guys don't know anything about it, but we, you know, we have portable radio, handheld radio system that all of our um, operation employees have. And super, super important to your safety on the hill and our operations. Uh, 
obviously ski patrol, grooming crew, all mountain ops, lift operators, you know, they have radios so we can have, you know, instantaneous contact with them. We're replacing the, our entire system. Its original system was implemented back in the 80s, so it's literally like working on DOS or something like that in comparison to what is available now in terms of digital-based systems. So we're, we're going to have a really great new uh, Motorola system, digitally based, and it'll also give us the opportunity to connect to uh, uh, Mono County Emergency Services as well, and so, you know, really, really robust in that respect, and in fact, they're talking to the same vendor we're using to implement their system now with what they're going to be doing at the county level, and, and as well as uh, time with the fire department. So, so great, great thing from a safety perspective. I know our employees are going to love that, but that's over $2 million for that. Uh, we are replacing uh, one of our domestic water wells uh, up at the Mount Lane. If you're up in Mount earlier, you would have noticed a, a, a big well or a drill rig there going at it. And uh, so we've completed the, the drilling. We're going to be building the well houses here, and that's that's in the works. And our still making reservoir, we just uh, replaced the liner on. I got some pictures to show you. So that, um, actually, you know, I should have, I just took a picture yesterday or a couple days ago when it was all new put in. This was last year. This picture was taken December 15th, believe it or not, last year. So this was the snow that we got from that, that uh, late October storm, remember that? Where we got, you know, eight inches of moisture and it was uh, only the last eight hours that it turned to snow, even at the top of the mountain. And, uh, and then finally we got about three feet of snow out of it, the top and mid. And, and this was what was left. I mean, we didn't really get any snow after that till the big dump in the end of December. Is Howard here? Yeah. <laughs> Is that going to happen again, Howard? <laughs> I, think, I think, I hope. Uh, you know, it seemed like we're going to get another uh, early season and uh, sort of feeling weird like that with the hurricane and all that stuff going on. We just need some sunspots, right, Howard, to bolster it. So in any event, um, yeah, so, that, the, so the thing with the, that line around, if anybody noticed, but it had leaks in it and it's just 30 years old. and. We were only able to fill it two thirds of its capacity, so we we replaced that entirely. Just finished it on uh, Monday. We completely replaced it. Uh, new liner. We're just now starting to refill it, uh, but now we can get all the way up to our 26 million gallons of storage volume on the reservoir. Super critical to our obviously ability to open the mountain on time, having that much water available all at once because in the early season. Uh, you know, when we have the temperatures that come in where we can make snow, we've got to jump on it and get as much water out as, as possible to build the trails up and so we can guarantee we can get open. So really, really important project. Again, not so much guest facing, but actually important to our sustainability. Um, and then here's some highlights from our growth capital, and I'll go through a couple of these details, but real quick, uh, I think you guys heard we had a, a press release that was in the paper. We, we acquired the Sierra Lodge on Main Street. And that uh, is uh, right there in the middle of Maine, across from John's Pizza Works. So that was strategic, so our employees could walk over. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, that's going to be completely uh, dedicated to uh, our employee housing, uh, likely really seasonal housing in particular. And, uh, and yeah, I'll give you some more details on that. Uh, we're also spending about uh, $4.5 million on other snowmaking uh, incremental expansion work and a new well there that we drilled, and I'll give you some more details on that. We're doing a renovation at the Mill Cafe, and then you guys, if you, anybody's driven up to Main Lines, you couldn't miss the fact that we're, we're rebuilding Woolies 2 Park, and I'll explain that to you in more detail. So Sierra Lodge, uh, we actually closed escrow in, in mid-July. Uh, it's 36 rooms, we'll get about 72 beds of staff accommodations there. Uh, we're working on some repairs, in fact we just are in the process of uh, repainting the building right now and did some uh, exterior repairs and uh, just kind of clean things up and getting it in good shape and available for our staff this season. So the, the thing I really want to point out to everyone is the fact that, you know, this is incremental housing for employees. It's not taking, it's not us buying a, an existing apartment that's already occupied by other employees of the community <laughs> and putting our, our employees in there. We've had people offer, ask us about that and we really don't like to do that for that reason. Um, so. So this opportunity came to us, and uh, we saw the value in it, and we pursued it, and we were able to close. So, uh, you know, we think it's a huge win for us to, to add those beds. Uh, and it's nice too. It's you know, it's in uh, in the uh, commercial zone, so we can do quote unquote you know nightly use of it and so forth if needed be. And uh, it'll also provide some um, 
beds for us in the summer months when we need uh, for construction crews. Uh, so as you know, as things are as you're here and things are gearing up, a lot of work going on, big project right right across here and other things that we have planned. I and mean, there's going to be a lot of visiting construction workers, and you know, we can definitely utilize these beds for for them as well. So snowmaking expansion, uh, kind of the highlight, we, we drilled a new well near the bottom of Chair 21. That's a picture of the drill rig when he was here. And uh, yeah, it went to 750 feet and we've got uh, good water in the well. It's 300 feet of water charge in there, which is great. We'll be bringing that online. Uh, we're continuing to expand our fan guns. Uh, we'll, we'll complete the uh, fan guns down Broadway. Uh, you know, we had the initial ones up there from top of Tier 1 to Tier 2 through Times Square, kind of down into the train park. We'll now complete it all the way down through the bottom of Broadway. And then we're also putting seven fan guns on uh, South Park, which will help with building the, the train park features there, but require a lot of snow. Uh, those are going in. So, you know, the beautiful thing about the fan guns is they're, you know, automatic and they run when the conditions are good and they're very efficient in terms of uh, power and they don't require compressed air uh, they just because they have the fan and uh, then we've you know we were slow to adopt that technology but we're fully embracing it and we're going to be doing more and more of that in the coming seasons here we're actually going to be spending another four to five million this next season next summer on a further expansion we'll be bringing some fan guns down stump alley and you know our snowmaking strategy just to give you a little background is really to you know get main lodge open by uh, Veterans Day, right? That's our traditional opening right around there. And we've, I don't think we've, we've missed it maybe once. I know we, we did an early opening, we had to close once and then reopen, but generally speaking, we always hit it and it's because of the snowmaking system. And, uh, and you know, obviously important to get in everybody's businesses rolling. So we, we recognize how important it is to start operations and we always focus on getting open as quick as we can. So this, these, these guns obviously are going to really uh, reinforce our, our ability to do that. And, uh, and then our, you know, our priorities after that is to really then create connectivity down to the mill, to Chair 2, and then get the connection over to Canyon Lodge. And so we are going to be adding uh, also some, some more fan guns out in the uh, schoolyard and really focus on trying to guarantee to the, our best of our abilities given you know, Mother Nature's conditions. But, that we could get Canyon Lodge at least open for access for Thanksgiving, which is, you know, I think really important to reducing the, the traffic on, on the main uh, road up to Main Lodge and giving people another place to stage and get on the hill. So we're working really, we're taking some steps this year to help with that. We'll be taking a lot more next year. We'll be focused on trying to complete that connection and hopefully we, you know, really be in a good shape for, for always having Canyon open for Thanksgiving, which I think is a big win. And then, We'll continue to work towards Eagle and uh, uh, putting uh, snow making down Quicksilver from the top 10, saddle 10, that'll get down to nine, and at that point it's tied into our existing snow making, that'll get you back down to Eagle. So, uh, you know, it's a little spotty getting over to Eagle, you have to kind of traverse it and get back, but uh, th this will make it a little bit more direct connection to Eagle too. So, so again, all this is, you know, just about, you know, preparing for what what we're experiencing, right, and the ups and downs of, of the climate, and, and knowing that we have to rely on, on, know that we have a robust snowmaking system we can rely on, particularly in the, the opening months of the season. So we're doubling down on that investment. This is uh, kind of hard to read. This is a floor plan of, so there's not really a good way to show this so much as I can just describe it, but this is the mill. We're uh, not drastically changing, but we're putting some money into it. We're uh, expanding the men's restroom. I always say, so I say it's actually in some ways a good thing. It's the only place in the mountain where the men have to wait in line to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so it's just like, there you go. Now you know what it's like, right? Ladies? So, but we are going to expand. It's been so bad. I mean, we've had comments for so many years. We're finally going to we're going to expand the bathrooms. We're basically just going to build in what's underneath that eave, that breezeway, and expand those bathrooms. Likewise, on the west side, we're going to um, close in that breezeway and reconfigure that area where we had the outdoor surgery and expand dining inside. And then we're also going to have a more formalized mobile pickup window there. Because uh, the mobile, you know, one of the things that came out of the, all the COVID stuff we were doing with the mobile order has been, you know, it's growing in popularity and success. And so we're definitely continuing to, to uh, grow that program and have that. <coughs> if you guys get your, your, your app, you can place your order, don't have to wait in line, go to the mobile pickup window. It's a quicker way to get your, your food if you're in a hurry. Uh, but this will provide about 100 uh, seats inside. And, uh, 
you know, it's, I mean, the mill has always worked well, but obviously in foul weather days, it's, you know, a little limited with the lack of seating inside. So that'll help with that. Uh, and then also the big thing too is it, it, it kind of hits the mark on, on smaller uh, weddings and wedding receptions as far as having that uh, indoor seating. And that's a big business. I mean, our, our wedding business is growing, you know, exponentially every year. It just keeps going on. So this will really make, I mean, not that the mill wasn't already used, but it'll, it will definitely expand on that capability in the summer months for, for hosting weddings. We're also doubling the size of the outdoor bar and uh, you know, putting a roof over it and, and making it a little more functional. So that'll be nice for the bartenders. <laughs> yeah, it'd be quicker for you guys to get drinks. So. Is it like a permanent roof or a... I'm yeah, yeah, a yeah. Yeah, it'll be a fixed roof permanent. with some roll downs, kind of like, uh, kind of like we did at Canyon uh, with the re renovation there a couple years ago on that west side bar. Um, but in the st obviously keeping in the style of what's going on at the mill. Um, so this is Woolies, uh, kind of hard to read in the scale, but basically, we, you know, it's 50 acres of land. That's sort of that red line that wraps around, it goes way up the hill. It was the old permit boundary for sleds that you guys may remember the bobsleds thing that, that we acquired that permit back in the, I don't know, 2010 or 11 or 12, something like that. And uh, in any event, you know, we, you know, the two part businesses, uh, there's a lot of people who don't ski and who are looking for other things to do. And it's really been a great business and high demand. We were pretty limited with what we had there. We had done a little bit of work to expand the existing lanes, but they're kind of a, the ones, I don't know if any of you have ever been there and done it, it's actually very fun, but it was, you know, dead into the south sun and it presented some challenges with, you know, the, the temperatures through the course of the day and the snow surface and where it would soften up, when it would be too slow, then it would, as soon as it got in the shadow, it would ice up and it would be too fast and we'd have uh, not enough room for a run out and putting rubber mats to control speed. So anyway, so what's going on up there, because it looks like a lot going on, um, is we're turning the two lanes facing them more east, easterly, so they're not dead into the south sun, so that'll help on the sun aspect. And we're lengthening them by uh, getting a couple hundred more feet of run out on it to so help sort of manage the speed and stop. And we're adding a, uh, I'll show you, oh, so I'm sure you're this, this gives you a little bit better, bigger close up of what we're focusing on. Uh, so the lanes will be, we'll have uh, 10 to 12 lanes, uh, 200 feet longer of lanes. Uh, we're adding a uh, tower mounted conveyor lift, covered conveyor lift that'll shuttle guests from the bottom or about midway on the flat and you get on the, on the conveyor lift, it'll take you to the top of the lanes instead of the, the tow that we had previously. So it'll be more efficient that way, quicker, safer, everything else. Uh, we're also expanding the parking a bit to the east and we'll be paving the parking lot. Uh, and then in subsequent phase, we'll be doing a driveway connection over to the east side where the Caltrans cinder shed is and um, making so the transit buses can loop through there. So that's kind of a picture of what it'll look like, pretty close. So that's the, that's the elevated conveyor lift, if you hadn't seen one before. Um, magic carpet, and um, but a pretty cool lift, and that'll that's what will shuttle you up to the top of the lanes. So this is going to look very, very close to what you're going to see when you get out there. And then uh, we're also, uh, their point of what we're doing at, at Woolies is to create it as a year-round adventure. Uh, center focused uh, of activities, and I'll explain that to you here. Uh, but summer tubing is something we're intending to do there. We'll have artificial lanes that will give us the ability to run that in the summer months as well. That's a picture actually of Heavenly if you've ever been there. So, so then uh, just, you know, uh, all, all plans are subject to change, but these are sort of the near term focus of capital projects. So we're going to be looking at building out uh, the Woolies 2 part with all the other activities, and I'll explain that in more detail. Uh, next year, next summer, we're gonna be replacing Chair 1 and Chair 16, and I'll give you guys a bunch of details on that. We're gonna be refurbishing Chair 3. Uh, we're gonna be implementing our new trail signage, um, which is you know, largely going to um, marry up with sort of the look and feel of, of what the town's been implementing over the past several years, so there'll be some continuity of wayfinding across the resort. I think it's really exciting. Uh, we're also looking at doing a third phase of renovations at Canyon Lodge to uh, renovate the fourth floor food service. Um, and it also will involve a small addition on the gondola side of the building that will give us the ability to add bathrooms finally to the fourth floor. <laughs> so 
which is hard to believe we've never had bathrooms in office years up on the fourth floor, but we'll have bathrooms finally on the fourth floor. Uh, so that, that's, that's a pretty good sized project and we'll see, we might implement it in a couple steps here uh, this coming year and the year after. Uh, speaking of bathrooms, we're not a place that's real popular in, in long lines is at, at the outpost with Mel House and the success of what we changed out there and the popularity of that location will be uh, looking to double the size of the restrooms out there just to handle the size of the crowds that are there. And then as I mentioned, we'll be continuing to do snow making upgrades really for three to four more years we'll be doing investing money into our snow making infrastructure. So every year we'll see more fan guns, more automated snow making, and, uh, and a number of other things. Uh, and then also down at Eagle Lodge, we are going to do start some improvements with the ski school terrain. Um, that'll that'll uh, reach up into the Camp High Sierra footprint there that we that we operate. And we have a long-term lease with the city of LA, and I'm going to hold comments on Eagle Lodge because I know you guys all want to ask me about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll at least master plan real quick. So what's sort of in the master plan is, is this at the any yeah. rent? I, I, so the red line is the outline of the property. It's about 50 acres. It goes way up the hill. Um, the purple line and then sort of the cyan color line, those are two different coasters. The purple line is a mountain coaster, so that's like a ride-on mm -hmm. coaster. It'll actually, so with the, the straight line that has a dog leg and goes top that, it'll actually, is an uphaul, it'll haul you up to the top of the property. And then from there, you'll, you'll gravity ride down the hill and go through some, some loops and whatever, not, not loops, but. That would be pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that part, uh, and, uh, some spirals. And, uh, you know, and kind of wind through the tree, so it'd be a really cool experience as much as, you know, kind of really getting, it's actually a beautiful property, you get higher up, the views are amazing, and there's some really gorgeous, even though I know we've got a lot of mortality in, the, in, our, in our forest here, the trees, there's still a lot of beautiful trees up there, so it's really a great way for our guests to sort of engage with our forest and have a great appreciation for it. And, and then with the other one that sort of goes up the same uh, pole and comes down as a, uh, a zip coaster, and that is uh, similar, but you're suspended from the line in, in hanging. And then I'll show you a couple of, not such great images, but some give you a better eye flavor what that is. Uh, and then there's going to be some adventure canopy ropes courses up on the, above the tube lanes. And then we'll also be bringing down the uh, snowmobile operations eventually uh, once we start working with the main line. Uh, then the other big thing is we're going to be putting in uh, permanent lodge to replace those trailers once and for all. And uh, hopefully we'll break down on that next year. But I, I kind of, I've got some, so this is a picture of a rendering of the day lodge uh, that we've already kind of worked through some schematic design on and hoping to build that next year. Uh, there's some some visuals of what the Mount Coaster looks like. If again, if, if you've been up to Heavenly, they have one, it's the closest one. There's, there's a number of them across the country. Steamboat has one, Copper. Um, Really fun experience. People love it, and it's pretty. Uh, does take a lot of skills. <laughs> you just get on there and ride. So it's 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 a fun thing that everybody can enjoy, and uh, pretty thrilling. And then I again I when I did this with the chambers, I kind of apologized for the quality of. It's just so it's so new and it's not very great collateral. But uh, anyway, that's the idea of the zip coaster, and it's it's a combination of um, you go it transitions from a. A, a tube that'll be like on the curbs, right, like a pipe rail, onto a cable, a free span cable that's like a zip line. And then you kind of go down through the course. And I'll let you guys ask me about the big zip line at the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> and then again, map, uh, you know, the map canopy course tour things, you know, that we've all seen, I think, and, you know, the idea of having that up there. So, so really, it's going to be kind of this one stop shop and then bringing snowmobile adventures down for sort of all the non-skiing activities, but the idea is it's year-round, the whole thing once it's all done, or you know, even as we phase it in, it'll become a year-round facility, summer and winter. And um, you know, we see it as really you know, a, a, something that's in demand you know, with our guests and a great opportunity for us to you know, create other avenues of, of revenue that aren't just relying on, on uh, the snow. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the story behind that. Okay, Chair 1 is 16. So the big news there is they're going to be upgraded to six-pack detachable chairlifts, and we're going to be doing enclosed terminals on them, which we haven't done before. And 
What that will allow us to do is to park all the carriers for the lift between the top and the bottom terminals. There's enough storage capacity in the enclosed terminal to park all the chairs out of the weather. So if we're getting a uh, you know, storm cycle coming in, we can put the chairs away so they're not out there getting rime ice on them and, uh, and delaying the opening you know, once the weather clears. So it's really gonna enhance our ability to open on time and, and take a lot of labor and, and pain and suffering. <laughs> have you ever seen the guys out there that have to go out there and actually break the ice off the, off the grips? It is a job. So, so yeah, that'll be a huge operational advantage that uh, change here. And it's a, the other thing, it's, it'll be a Doppelmeyer lift. Uh, it is their D-line lift, which is like really their Cadillac lift. Um, so it'll be a really cushy, nice lift. The, the chairs where, you know, people ask, we're not gonna do bubbles, we're not gonna do heated seats, there's gonna be chairs. There's, you know, just a little concern operationally because we do get winds here. Uh, you know, just the operational ability if we had that. And there isn't too many times where you know, I know Big Sky, they, they have the APAC and they have the heat seats and the bubble that they put in, but my God, it's 20 below zero there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when are we, come on, that's why we all live here, right? This is Southern California scheme. So, you know, that's why we have the best weather and the best resort. So, in any event, uh, the other things to point out on operation, it's going to be a 90 degree load. So, you'll kind of load on the outside of the bolt wheel, which will also have a loading carpet with a, a loading gate. So, that'll be new for us. It's done extensively in Europe. Almost all lifts have this, and um, so it might surprise people when they first get up to it, the lift. It'll be a little different than what they're used to, but I think you'll find once you start using it, you'll say this is great. Brings everybody to the line at the same time. Guarantees you get the full capacity load out of the lift and uh, proven technology. So uh, that'll be pretty cool. And then on uh, chair one, it's going to get replaced in the same alignment. Um, so no real big changes there other than the 90 degree load. And then on chair 16, we're actually gonna realign it slightly um, so that it's away from the Abbey sheets on Lincoln Mountain and uh, up at the top. So it'll basically be kind of between where the top of 16 is now and the top of chair four there, if you can kind of see that on the map. Uh, but that gets us you know, another 150 feet away from the toe of Lincoln Mountain. And you know, even last year in that storm cycle in December, right, the mountains kind of sloughed and actually buried the chairs and we have data out and you know, just delays opening and so forth. So again, another uh, change is a lot of effort to change the alignment, to be honest, with all the work you gotta go through the Forest Service. And, uh, but we felt it was worth it on that lift and such an important lift to get out of base. It's also, you know, the capacity will be uh, increased by about 25% over what the, the quad is and uh, 25 to 30%. And you know that'll help get people out of the base quicker, right? So reduce lineups there, and you know as as you know the village continues to grow, um, you know more people will be coming up there. So this is part of the plan, just to increase the out of base capacity. Uh, don't have it on here on this presentation, but we do have plans to add that next leg of gondola from the village from uh, Canyon that'll go to the top of 15. That's that's kind of hovering in that five year range that we're looking at. Um, and again, that'll be about increasing out of base capacity um, and allowing people too that get on the gondola in the village to just stay on and not get off the canyon, just keep going and get up on the hill so they don't have to get into the mess of people and change the lifts. They can just get out and get skiing. So that's timing of that is going to be a little bit tied to you know things coming online down here. And now the, the line lights getting built, maybe sooner than later. So so here I go. this is the list. I kind of mentioned it already, but so these are our things that are sort of on the medium, like medium turn, and then here I definitely have the asterisk of plan subject to change because, you know, none of us can predict global uh, uh, financial meltdown, as Russell used to always love to say, and, or uh, global pandemics, or, you know, all the things that we face as a, as a business here uh, and living in the mountains that are always a challenge. But generally speaking, these are things that are on our list of priorities. Uh, we're going to do some renovations up at McCoy Station, uh, be adding some additional um, F and B operations, sort of where the glass room is there, uh, the Woolly Room, where we do the, the Dow Winery pop up, uh, and kind of make that into a more formal F and B venue. Add some deck out there as well, and then clean the place up and give it a refresh. We'll be looking at putting a permanent food and beverage facility at the bottom of Chair Four, um, yeah, as opposed to the little Airstream trailer that we have now. <laughs> and uh, and thanks for bearing with us on that stuff. <laughs> And then on the plan also, on our, our master plan is uh, kind of the next 
the real big kind of F&B facility ad additional new will be at the, the Saddle, Lincoln, or the Lincoln Saddle there at the top of 10. Uh, there's plans for an 800 seat F&B facility there. And uh, that, you know, that one I'm excited to, to plan because, you know, that one has the, the opportunity to be like a Euro style kind of mm -hmm. mountain lodge. And if you guys, again, if you've been to Europe, some of these, you get some of these incredible food and beverage facilities, just have these amazing vistas. That's one location where we can do that. It'll be incredible. Uh, chair two replacement is likely uh, in, uh, you know, maybe closer to four than seven years. Uh, and that likely will get upgraded. It's actually in our master plan as an eight pack chairlift. Um, everybody's so nervous about building eight packs because, I don't know, they're big. And uh, <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of coordinate, you need a lot of space to load it and queue it. There's probably enough room down there. And, but you know, I tell you over in Europe, again, I get back to the Europe discussion, you know, they, they put eight packs in like we put in quads. And, and, uh, and I, you know, I think actually Altera's got an initiative now that any new lift we put in will be at least a six pack that we won't do quads anymore. So, um, so we'll see, you know, whether, whether two becomes an eight pack, I think it's the one place where we could do that and it would probably be good for a capacity uh, perspective. Talked about the village gondola extension, Eagle Base Lodge. So, um, what? What's going on with Eagle Base? So we, you know, we have a, we have entitlements for Eagle Base Lodge that we got back in the mid 2000s, 2007, and uh, we just we've been sitting on it, kind of tanked with the recession, honestly, and uh, and then it's just been a battle, you know, ever since to try to kind of get things rolling again, and. Uh, so, you know, here we are now under Altera. We've got a lot more capital available, and um, there, there's definitely a lot of discussions going on. And I think, I think there's a very good chance that Eagle could actually get going again here in the next year or so. Uh, you know, it's going to require some revamping and what have you in terms of planning approvals and so forth. But uh, there's a good chance that Eagle actually could break ground before we start Main Lodge. And that's the last thing on the list is Main Lodge redevelopment. We are. Uh, daylighting our plans to the town next Wednesday with a uh, presentation to town council. So I encourage you to tune in on that on Granicus or show up in Sweet Z. Uh, it'll be an hour before the regular town council meeting, so it'll start at 3 o'clock. And if you miss it, it's always recorded, right? Granicus, you can always go back and watch it after the fact. Um, but we'll be giving a presentation on Main Lodge, showing you what we're planning to do there. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek here, but if anybody asks you, you got to say you haven't seen the thing because you guys are getting some. Because I know you're so interested in it, so I'm going to give you a sneak peek, but I'm not going to tell you a lot because I want you to tune in next uh, next Wednesday. But um, yeah, so that that'll be the official kickoff of the formal uh, planning approvals and review for Main Lodge redevelopment. And that you know, a couple quick things. So you know, we closed on our land exchange with the Forest Service literally like two weeks before we closed down for the pandemic. And so like at the beginning of March 2020, we, we actually bought the land from the Forest Service, paid, them, got the deed, it's all done. And, uh, and we were going out with a press release and preparing that. And, and then, you know, and uh, we said, well, it's probably a bad thing to go announce this when we just shut down for the ski season. You know, we shut down temporarily for COVID. We thought it was gonna be two weeks, right? <laughs> then we all think, oh, it's just two weeks. Well, I'll go sit in our house for two weeks, and then we'll go back to work. But yeah, lo and behold. So at any rate, uh, we never did publicly release the, the fact that we bought the land. So just to be clear, we acquired the land from the Forest Service, and that actually happened right before COVID. And uh, so we own the property, have fee title to both the main lodge uh, area, and we also acquired the sewer ponds behind there, which actually is 15 and a half acres. So it's a total of about 36 acres. And we've been working on it ever since in terms of just getting a, a plan together to submit for a specific plan approval with the town. We actually formally submitted an application to the town. I don't know, Sandra, are you still here? She left. No, she left. Yeah. Um, so Sandra has it. So it's in her hands. <laughs> so, but it'll be lengthy. Don't get me wrong. It's a big, big project. It's uh, everything up there that you know and love. <laughs> I don't know if you love it. Everything that you know, everything up there is getting torn down. Every single building is going to get torn down and rebuilt one way or another. Everything. So there was some discussion around, like, oh, yeah, we'll keep the gondola. Now we're talking, we're going to completely replace the gondola. Um, uh, main Lodge, we're going to keep part of the Main Lodge. Nope, all new Main Lodge. Uh, obviously, all new hotels. <laughs> and uh, so here, I'll, I'll give you guys, again, sneak peek. 
going to deny showing this to you. Okay, just real quick before I get there. Uh, this is, so just to kind of give you an idea of timing. So we'll, we're making this presentation to town council next week. Uh, you, there'll be a lot of details shared there. I do encourage you just to watch that. Uh, again, 3 p.m. on Wednesday. And, uh, and then following that, we'll be getting to a public, public noticing through, for CEQA and NEPA, which are the environmental processes we have to go through and get approvals. And that'll likely go out somewhere around the end of October and November. Um, and that commences the actual, this is a project that's happening, it's your time for the public to make comment for 30 days on any questions or concerns they have that they can express to both the town and the Forest Service and so that they can make sure to uh, scope and evaluate that in the eventual draft environmental impact study and draft environmental impact report. So it's CEQA and NEPA, is, it's a joint uh, stay in federal process because we're on, there are improvements on the ski area that we're doing associated with the improvements on the private land of the main lodge. So, so it's a very, very complicated process that, uh, you know, we have to go through. We're going through it together as far as the two processes, but, but there's, there are different things you have to do and uh, it's quite complicated, particularly the EIR, yeah, yes, that's the highest level environmental review you can do. So the Forest Service already told us that it's going to be a minimum of two years for them to give us a, a decision just based on their protocols and timing and process and everything else. So we know it's going to take at least two years to get to a final decision. And so the steps are in public scoping, 30 days of public comment, look for that. And there'll be a website for you guys to look at and then to submit comments on and questions. I mean, certainly encourage you guys to do that. Welcome all the feedback we can get. And then they'll, the consultant team that works for the town and the Forest Service, not for us, uh, the environmental consultant, they'll be putting together a draft EIR, EIS document. And then that should get probably put out for circulation and comment next summer. And then that'll be another, I think it's a 45 day period for public comment. And uh, then they'll get all those comments back and then they'll prepare a final document and then a final decision notice and that takes another, you know, period of time or by, depends on the extent of the comments, right? So, uh, you know, we can't fully predict how this is all gonna play out and I'm sure there, there's gonna be controversy, we know that. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to recognize where we can talk to a lot of people and trying to get feedback where, so we understand the issues as best we can and know, which, you know, pretty, pretty aware of what's going on in other resorts and things that they're facing. Um, you know, we know, we know water's a big deal. We know housing's a big deal. We know uh, traffic and parking are a big deal. We know wildfire's a big deal, right? All these things, we know all this stuff's a big deal. We, and you'll, those details will be in that presentation that Ron's gonna actually deliver uh, Ron Cohen, our president and CEO, uh, next week. And hopefully you guys will see that we've you know, been very conscious of that and made a huge effort to address those issues and concerns uh, as we get into the launching this thing. So a lot of thoughts gone into it. Um, so a couple of years from now, hopefully we get to a decision of approval. At some point we'll layer in the actual sort of use permit first phase of uh, implementation uh, so that we you know, don't lose a bunch of, we can do that and kind of get it on the heels of the NARML approval, get sort of use permit design review for first phase and start construction. So, you know, hopefully by the summer of 25, we're breaking ground out there and, and uh, you know, Altair is fully behind this project in terms of their commitment. And uh, so, you know, it's gonna happen, is all I can tell you. You know, it's, you know, how long is it gonna take? We'll see, I mean, a lot of that's gonna be driven by the market and what's going on with, the economy at large and, and the marketplace and so forth. But, uh, you know, I think reasonably it'll get, you know, built in eight to 10 years, I think it'll take to do it. I mean, it's, it's literally over a billion dollars worth of work, just so you guys know, in terms of actual, at least today's numbers, construction costs. Tom, um, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, do they take into consideration in this process the old growth forest and how much of the old growth forest is removed for the yeah. project? Yeah, yeah, all that'll be in. There's really not, you know, we're largely just in the footprint of what's been disturbed. Um, and the one exception is we're, we're proposing to add a parking lot between Main Lodge and Chair 2, um, which is actually where we're gonna do a smaller building that'll be our administrative and employee services building. That'll kind of, because right now it's spread out through Main Lodge uh, in terms of our office space and employees and so forth. So we're gonna consolidate that into a much more subtle building that'll be, but we're also gonna create some parking down there to sort of, we 
call pig pen. Um, so there's going to be some tree cutting there for sure with, associated with that. Um, but that'll help kind of replace the, the parking that we're going to lose at the main lot, you know, itself, because that's going to be the footprint of the hotel. So, so okay, so here you go. I'm not going to linger on these too long because I'm going to get in trouble if I share too much. So there's there's the the property, right? So there's parcel A and parcel B. Uh, parcel A is, is the main lodge. So it's it's the property north of the highway, right? So it's the inn, it's the gondola, the old Murray Over House, ski of apartments. That's the property. That's 20 and a half, 20.6 acres, and then it's 15 and a half acres down at the uh, at the back there. That's where the wastewater pond is right now. So I just wanted to give you the context of where that is, and then you can kind of see where we're proposing the, the parking area down here. You know, connect really up there's some ski school development associated with that. New main lodge constructed here. And new gondola. Um, you know, we're going to be doing a chair one before that. So that's that's the big picture. And uh, and then just again a little flavor of what the core of the village is. The uh, couple hotel pads. You can see there's that one that's right on the beachfront. If you call it the snow front. That'll be a five star, you know, level hotel. And it'll be likely. Uh, you know, it'll be a, it'll be dedicated hotel rooms, but it'll also be residential, uh, branded residential. With that, I'm sharing this with because you guys are realtors, so you guys. <laughs> stuff, right? So, so uh, you know, don't go out blabbing too much here. But let's see all this stuff in a few days. It's actually public record now. It's in the end of the town. Uh, there'll be residential condominiums there as well. The other kind of hotel site is so this is hotel one. So this is kind of the premier hotel. There's another one there that'll have dedicated hotel rooms, but it'll also have uh, residential units included. And then, then these other buildings are kind of more just residential buildings. Uh, bigger one, more electric, kind of typical condo hotel back there, and then some other small residential. There'll be some res mixed use uh, here with uh, commercial on the ground floor, uh, two of the three flats of residential above on those. And um, Ron will provide all those details on the numbers and stuff. But, uh, you know, obviously the big goal, and then the other big thing, obviously, is we're moving the road around the back, right, so that you're, the road's not going through the front of everything. And so that's, you know, uh, going to be a huge effort getting that done. There's a lot of work regulatorily between the town, the Forest Service, and Caltrans to figure out. We'll figure all those details out as we get further into it. Um, we've already had a lot of discussions, but we're, you know, confident we can get it done. Uh, but that, you know, that then you don't have traffic running through your front yard. And, uh, you know, we're really going to have one of the best ski beaches in, in the country. And, uh, you know, that's the goal of this, to try to really raise the guest experience. Uh, there and, and having that connectivity of the of the lodging and village experience with the with the snow front. Shields. Oh, uh, how many phases do you expect to have in the building? Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be at least three, okay. if not four to five. And again, I think it'll, a lot will depend on you know larger issues at play with you know the state of. The real estate market and the economy and what have you, but um, you know, we want to get the hotels in there as quickly as possible. And uh, you know, again, you know, Altera is fully supportive and behind this. I mean, they're, you know, you just don't have to look too much further than what they're already doing, right? They're doing, you know, huge rebuild at the bottom of the steamboat right now that they're finishing up next year. They're going to be starting a huge project at uh, Deer Valley that's going to involve a whole new base area with understructure podium parking and uh, three new hotel pads there. That's a, a massive project. So, um, so again, you know, I think the thing to, to understand about Main Lodge is that we're replacing everything, right? So it's not like we're adding this. It's, you know, we're, there is some additional added residential product in terms of the, the pillow count there. And again, Ronald share those details. Now, is that phase one? Which is phase one? It, it'll be one of those hotels, likely. Yeah, yeah, in maybe some portion of the village. So, well, and probably building a lodge. We gotta, we gotta, there's some lot of really challenging sequencing with the gondola. Yeah, operation. I got it. Get it out of the way, and then we gotta get the new lodge built to tear the old lodge down to make room for the gondola. And so there's a lot of moving parts. We, I gotta be honest, we haven't quite figured out all of the final details, but we're, we're working on it. Um, so yeah, it'll be, and then we continue after to operate, right? Winter and summer, so we, you know, we have every intention of doing that working it out, but it'll be a construction zone for a while. And then the parcel down below, people have already asked me, I've heard there's going to be home sites. There are. There's going to be some home sites down there. There's going to be some 
lots. Uh, you know, if we're, so we're going to reclimate the site. We're going to put in a, a modern packaged uh, wastewater treatment plant where we're going to um, create recycled water that we'll be able to, re to use for both irrigation in the summer and snow making in the winter. So that'll supplement it. Those, those ponds are storage ponds of the reclaimed water, so it's going to be uh, you know, highly treated water that meets state standards from a health code perspective, so effectively usable, potable. Now, it's not potable, but could possibly be potable water. Uh, and that's sort of, they'll be decorative, but they'll also be storage. For, that'll be tied into our snow making system. It'll give us uh, about 15 million gallons of storage. And um, yeah, and then there's going to be uh, lots there. Uh, you know, right now it's proposed it's 15 custom home lots. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. You know, it's early in the process, but that's the thought that there's this lower density down there. And, uh, could be pretty cool. That's it. For now. So I'll come back next week. I'm happy to answer any other questions. What were you going to say about the zip line? The zip line. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, the zip line. Uh, the zip line. You guys remember the, the yeah, the poop mover and the QMC? This is probably going to go down in the annals of the QMC and the QMC. Um, yeah, you know, it was, we were, you know, reaching for a star and we didn't quite get there. We got, we literally did get it finished and we were testing it and we were getting performance results that weren't within spec and it, we, we couldn't satisfy well, our own interest in safety, obviously, and much less the state's and the Forest Service's requirements for a permit. And, and our vendor just couldn't get it to the finish line. So, you know, I know we get into a lot of details, but it just, it came down to the point where we were gonna have to do a really serious re-engineering of the whole thing. And we actually did spend money on looking into it. and. Um, it's just not a certainty, right? There's nothing out there that's off the shelf. It's a custom deal. It's like going to the moon. <laughs> and like, you know what? That's just too risky of a business to be in at this point. You know, we're not gonna throw good money after bad. And, uh, and as you saw with what we're doing at Woolies, you know, we got a lot we're gonna invest in there. I think that's a way better uh, predictable uh, outcome of what we can achieve there with the uh, proven stuff with the, the mount coasters and the tubing and all that business is all stuff that's, you know, we're not the first ones to do it. And uh, yeah, so, you know, the, big, the mega zip was kind of on the, one of those ego projects that it was like, we're gonna have the biggest <laughs> And, uh, you know, honestly it worked up to about 100, it worked up to about 180 pounds. <laughs> so Rusty was never gonna Rusty was never gonna get to ride it. <laughs> so, I could have wrote it, but uh, I didn't. <laughs> but uh, we did it so some water dummies went down. I got some cool video of water dummies going down. It's pretty cool. It was cool. But yeah, we it it's interesting business. I mean, the you know, there's just not there's not a lot of uh, there's just not a lot of industry out there that, that does it. And there's there's a number of guys, and everybody's honestly building a custom installation each time they put one in. And truthfully, since then, Vale is made the decision, they're getting rid of all their big zip lines. They've had a couple of bad accidents, and they're like, we're done. So they're out of it, and I, you know, I think we're gonna, not that we're falling everything, we already kind of decided we're gonna get rid of it. The platforms are still there. There's some other issues going on in the legal realm, but we haven't quite got there. We'll probably tear them down next time, take them out. It was gonna conflict with the main line redevelopment anyways, although we could have probably got five years of use out of the way it started using it. Probably um, not gonna happen, not gonna happen. <laughs> If the two parcels you acquired, will those be Mammoth Town property? Or no, we, yeah, well, we're, we're uh, so we're within the urban growth boundary, and we'll be part of the process with this. We'll be putting in place specific plan, uh, you know, zoning with the town through this process and approval. And um, we'll also require a, a amendment to the general plan. Um, so, because right now it's effectively unzoned property. So, so yeah, that would be the process that will be accomplished through this uh, application with the town and the environmental review and approvals. Um, but it, it's a specific plan. Pretty specific. I mean, you know. Am I assuming EMS and fire will be located there too? 
Yeah, we've, we've been having discussions with Fire District about them wanting to locate a kind of, not a full-blown station, but like an outpost station, if you will, that maybe have a tanker and have gear and, you know, put a little stage guy there and then, you know, have the ability to kind of have quicker response from volunteers because, you know, there's a number of them that work for us, right? And right. Uh, both for not just there at the village, but maybe also responding to stuff on, you know, Red's Meadow and back that way. Um, you know, it could be a big benefit, so we're, we're definitely happy to plan. That's in the plan to include that. And, you know, I think the other thing, too, with, uh, you know, fire, fire resiliency and so forth, um, you know, obviously we're going to comply with all the state codes and what have you that we uh, address that. But, you know, I think with the, with the reclaimed water and that storage capacity will be available for us that, you know, we'll be able to deploy that through our snowmaking system. Uh, you know, it's funny because you hear different things like, no, you can't fight a fire with snowmaking. It's like, heck, you can't. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Big Bear just did it. Yeah, 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 yeah it's no it. summit. They had a fire threatening them, and they put their stuff out there, and it, it helped because there were spots coming out, you know, actually stuff flying over, and that stuff was able to put that stuff out before that started to a raging fire. And when they had that fire down there, uh, this was just last week, if those of you paid attention or not, but they said, like, the first... I, there was nobody there helping them from any of the, you know, governmental agencies. They were fighting it by themselves, and so they had the they had it full blown. They had their whole sprinkler system going, their fire, uh, their snow making guns going, and the whole deal. And it arguably, you know, saved them. So, you know, we certainly are prepared to do that with our stuff, and uh, and you know, having those reservoirs there too is the ability for helicopters to to grab water and so forth as well if need be. So. So, you know, again, that's speaking toward sort of how we're seeing how we're going to address that um, with what we're planning to do and being responsible and recognizing the need to think about the future and how, you know, what we're dealing with here in terms of the climate and how we're going to be sustainable. Yeah? Age and mountain improvements you can speak Yeah, so I just did put that on there. Um, so June Mountain is, the big thing there is eating water to support snowmaking. We just actually did sign a longer term agreement with the uh, June Lake PUD that uh, they're going to guarantee us, I can't remember what the number, exact number is, but some reasonable amount of water that we're going to use to uh, further expand snowmaking, particularly up the Canyon Trail, and get that sort of where we got coverage on Canyon Trail. Because um, that's, you know, really huge to be able to get people, so people can ski down, up and download them on the lift, right, which is the other problem. And you know we, uh, you know once we kind of get that locked in, we're we there, you know there's already early you know discussions about obviously a replacement for chair one, uh, or an additional chair, you know maybe in the old QMC alignment that would be a quad at least something like that to help increase with loading capacity. Um, you know that's the limitation obviously the lift getting up the hill right, and not a great thing when on a Saturday on a busy ski Saturday or holiday it obviously gets back quite a bit. Limited for sure, which you know, some of you guys probably like the fact that when you get up on the hill, it's great. There's not that many, you have a lot of room, but you know, we had a lift where you get more people up there quicker, it'll get more crowded, and then that'll precipitate the need to expand up and be and things like that. So, um, so yeah, no, there's those things are in discussion. You know, I think I think there's a good chance that we'll, you know, uh, again, snowmaking will definitely be a focus in the coming couple of years here, expanding that up this, the candy trail in particular, and then. I think at that point we'll really be able to take a serious look at the, the chair one uh, addition or replacement. I think I think it'd be smart just to put another chair and keep the old one because use that for pedestrians and then just have another lift dedicated to the skiers and boarders. And you know then you know over there's you know the other part of that is funny because when I did I don't know if you guys this is the third time I've done this presentation I did the community coffee and chamber of commerce but on the community coffee presentation, Ed Rossi was actually on, came in questions. He's the guy that owns the rodeo greenhouse now. So, you know, it's, he was asking, what are you going to do? So, like, well, what are you going to do with the rodeo greenhouse? So, you know, we'll see, you know, you know we'll, we need to have some conversations with him and see what his plans are, but it's sort of a, you know, you do you, we're gonna be a, you're going to build that. And so, as you guys remember from the Interwest days, that was all planned to be, they had started a, a, a specific plan with the county that kind of stalled out for building a little, about a thousand beds of accommodations over there. That's going to be important to, to support the investment in, in June, just have more bed base. Because you only have the, 
the staging capacity of the parking there now, which is really about 2,500 skiers. So um, if you can add more bed base in June, then you can start to help support further capital investment on the hill. Uh, you know, stuff's not cheap. <laughs> Any other questions? You guys know where to find me. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, we'll be getting out there and talking to everybody here.